Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we are back around to the musculoskeletal system. We're going to go through a musculoskeletal practice question. But before we do, please be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com where you can find out all the information about our upcoming courses. One of the most exciting ones we've got coming up is our crash course. So the crash course is meant to be a quick review of cardio, musculo, and neuro one more time before exam day. So just a little preview of our crash course is that this is a hybrid class where we have synchronous and asynchronous content. So there is a bunch of pre-recorded modules related to the cardio, musculo, and neuro content. Each one of those as we were creating them, we wanted to make sure it got you another handful of questions correct on test day. And then each week we cap it off with a session dedicated to practice questions. And that's our synchronous or live class where we take you through questions one by one, talk you through how to answer them. We just, we go through a whole bunch of questions so that you can understand not just the content behind it, but also how to answer it on test day. So our crash course is a great economical way to get through the cardio, musculo, and neuro systems. This is like cramming, but way better just the last three weeks before every test day. So as I'm recording this, we're getting closer and closer to the July test date. We will begin our crash course three weeks before test day, which will be the first week of July. So be sure to check that out over at ptfinalexam.com where you can find out all the info you need in order to absolutely dominate on test day. All right, so today related to the musculoskeletal section. So on test day, we do tend to go through the, the well, not, not on test day. On test day, you do this too. But in this podcast, we are going through the FSBPT content outline, going through each system represented on test day. So today we're starting back up at the top with the largest section on the exam. This is the musculoskeletal section. This has somewhere between 51 and 60 questions related to it on the 2023 version of the exam. For 2024, the actual number of questions comes down slightly. However, the proportion of questions remains the same. So in this case, we're talking about of the 250 items on test day, about 20% of those items are related to the musculoskeletal section. And that will continue. That proportion will continue on. Those of you listening to this down the road, that proportion continues. And so these questions are obviously going to be of paramount importance to make sure you can answer these on test day. So without further ado, we will go ahead and dive into our practice question. As per our usual, I will give you a moment to respond to the question. I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. A three-year-old child is being evaluated for elbow pain following an injury that occurred when the child was being swung into the air by their arms. The child presents to the clinic holding the arm at their side while maintaining pronation. Which of the following injuries most likely occurred? One, inferior translation of the radius. Two, inferior translation of the ulna. Three, superior translation of the radius. Four, superior translation of the ulna. So we have a mix and match style question. We have a three-year-old child being evaluated for elbow pain following an injury that occurred when the child was being swung into the air by their arms. The child presents to the clinic holding the arm at their side while maintaining pronation. Which of the following injuries most likely occurred? We have inferior translation of the radius, inferior translation of the ulna, superior translation of the radius, superior translation of the ulna. So this case, this is talking about what is classically known as a, an annular dislocation or the pulled elbow syndrome related to, to the annular ligament of the radius. So the correct answer here is that inferior translation or traction injury done to the radius by holding the child by their, by their hands and swinging them or creating a longitudinal traction force. So the radius, it's typically held in place, the radial head is typically held in place by the annular ligament and so that's that annular ligament on the radial head is what permits pronation and supination. And in this case, the child is holding the arm at their side, maintaining pronation, meaning they are, they are reluctant to move into a supinated position. They are, obviously the elbow is hurting. And in this case, uh, what the correct answer is, is inferior slippage or inferior translation of the radius. So this is a traction injury where you pull on the hand. And remember, the hand is mostly connected to the radius. It, it is right there by the ulna as well, the distal end of the ulna. But most of the hand is articulating with the distal end of the radius. So when you pull sharply on the end of the hand or pull sharply on the hand of a child, you have the likelihood of 
of damaging the annular ligament of the radius, creating an inferior translation of the radius. So that's anatomic position. You have a longitudinal force creating an inferior translation of the radius. So as far as your interventions here, obviously the biggest intervention here is that closed reduction. So you as a PT, I mean, there certainly could be cases in say an acute scenario where you could be involved in the acute closed reduction. However, typically this is a case that uh, usually you'll get a patient, the, the child requires imaging and then the physician will follow up and usually the physician will do that, that closed reduction meaning they will relocate the radial head into the annular ligament. I personally have never done a relocation here or closed reduction. However, I, I am familiar with several cases where that was required. And so again, imaging plus manipulation or, or some type of reduction would be required. And obviously that would be done in the interdisciplinary team, usually by the physician in order to relocate that elbow or in order to relocate the the radius back into the radial head into the annular ligament. So there you go. There's your quick question for today. As always, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can get all of our cheat sheets, tips, tricks, all the things you need for test day. Plus remember that this is something that you are good at. So if ever you get a little discouraged as you're going through all this and you say, man, there's, there's a lot because I mean, I've got a whole room full of textbooks related to, to the NPTE. And there is a lot. There's absolutely a lot. And just remember that this is something that you've studied, you are good at, and you actually enjoy this stuff. So just keep that keep that in mind. Uh, keep a grin on your chin as you're studying. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we have. And if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a review over on Google Play, Spotify, iTunes, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. It only takes a moment. And in the meantime, stay safe out there. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.